Welcome to the SEO Insider with your host, Seth Price, founder of Blue Shark, taking you inside the world of legal marketing and all things digital. Welcome, everybody. I am thrilled and honored to have Scott Hardy from Top Class Actions. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Seth. It's great to see you. Scott is one of the more enjoyable guys in our space. Um, I <laughs> personally contest that he is so fun and is so uh, generous with his his entertaining that I had to go on a low carb diet after dining with Scott. But uh, the dessert uh, overload is something that I will not soon forget. Well, I, I don't, I don't drink. And so I've got to get my sugar some way. And that, that tends to be, oh, desserts. Well, look, and I, and I get that because we all want to have our cake and eat it too. And <laughs> I love the idea because who wants to have one dessert, right? Like right. I, I remember once there was this massive guy I met. It's like, who would want to go to a, an ordinary entree restaurant when there's a buffet you could have, go back, you don't like this. You So I love that fact. The problem is for someone who doesn't have willpower, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the ability to not just taste. So I, I feel like that in some of the world, the um, some, some restaurants, they go to the shot glass desserts. Yes. And, and when I was younger, I was like, why would they do that? And now I get it. It's less is more. Yes. Yeah, I understand. It's, it's hard, but uh, I am one of those guys that will be, I will want to sit there and take a look at the, the menu and I'll be like, oh, I need to get that appetizer and that appetizer. And I'll have a little bit of each one. And the same thing as you found with dessert was, I'm like, well, my gosh, there are like five awesome desserts here. Well, we can't just figure out one. We've got to try a little bit of every one. Well, look, being a Jew from New York, we ate Chinese food as a family. Like you'd order a bunch of dishes and everybody had some from everywhere. I went out with somebody who was not part of my community and everybody had their own little entree sitting in front of theirs and there was no sharing. I was like, what is this? This seemed very foreign to me. So I love the fact that you've taken the New York Jewish Chinese spirit and brought it to desserts. Well, that's one of my very first date with my wife. Whose, whose families are, are, are New, York, New York Jews. And we were sitting there at an Italian restaurant, start off a coffee because it was a blind date, didn't know if it was gonna work out, right? Then we go to dinner and she said, I, I, you know, I get my meal and I'm just used to just plowing down. And she's like, hey, that looks really good. And I said, well, yeah, it is good, thank you. <laughs> she goes, I wanna make sure it's clear that if you and I are gonna be dating, we share food. And, and I've gotten to the point with my wife, she, she, she's identified this, that I will order around her meal knowing she will not finish it. So I will not, I will order something completely different so that I can experience both. This is just because she doesn't eat a ton, but uh, exactly. Exactly. That, that's also part of the reason I had to go on the diet. It wasn't just your desserts, <laughs> uh, but uh, look, top class actions. It is when, when you look, you travel in the circle that we travel within, you have law firms, you have marketing agencies, happy to play in both those worlds. And there's Scott in the middle. I, I assume that the genius of it, as well as the difficulty is it, it doesn't fit into a lot of boxes. Tell me about it. How, how did it come to be? So top class actions, you know, I'm a technology guy. I was never a lawyer. I was always intrigued by law. And one day I was flipping through a magazine. I saw an advertisement for the Airborne Health Supplement Settlement. The little fizzy tablets drop into water so you don't get a cold. Well, in that settlement, anyone can claim up to $63, no proof of purchase, no box, nothing. Just in theory, go online, submit your claim, and you'll get a check. I said, man, there's got to be a website which tracks these easy-to-claim settlements. Well, there wasn't, so I built it. And I thought, knowing nothing about law and nothing about class actions, that creating this online repository for class action settlements, settlement administrators would come bashing down my door and pay me millions of dollars every year to advertise. That didn't happen. I didn't know that defendants didn't want people to know about their settlements necessarily, uh, that plaintiff attorneys, you know, work on these things for years and want them settled, uh, and that the settlement administrators, they just want to get the business. You know, the margins are relatively thin. So that first year I sold one settlement. I went, oh boy, this isn't working. But it was my side gig. No big deal. What was, your, what was your day job at the time? Cloud computing sales. Gotcha. Uh, well, I was part of a team that helped create HBO Go and HBO Max. Wow. I uh, the tech, just, the, watching the, the, just watching the Gilded Age. Exactly. That's it. I mean, the, the, the teams at HBO that built that are super amazing. And my teams that I worked with were the people on the internet side to make sure that everybody could watch it wherever they were. Well, I, I got a complaint, but that's the, the, when you download stuff, 
it doesn't let you watch your download unless you have internet action. The whole idea is that if you get on a plane, you don't want to pay for Wi-Fi, that you should be able to watch it. No, they want you connected even to watch your download. Not pleased. Yeah, because they're they're restricted by the licensing for each country you're in. Right. And so it's yeah, it it was it was it was really cool, really cool to be a part of that team. But then fast forward like uh, a year into it, a, an attorney walks up and says, Scott. I need, that's great. You can find me claimants for my class action settlements, but I need plaintiffs. Can you find me plaintiffs? And I went, the entrepreneur went, yes, absolutely. No problem. I've got you, sir. <laughs> and I turned around and went, oh no, how do I do that? But we launched class action investigations, which are advertisements for these, for these cases. And we started making money. You know, it was just me every day I got home from work and I'd write articles on top of class actions, you know, the power of SEO. And so I was one of the first people that was doing that. And every day I just wrote articles on class action settlements, went to bed, went to work, came home from work, did the exact same thing, weekends, that's all I did. It was ironically not different than how I started my law firm. Built a website, added some content. It was a DC criminal defense site, a DC criminal lawyer in DC, practicing DC criminal defense. All of a sudden, we outgrew our office in two weeks. Like when you do it and you hit pay dirt, especially early on, you do some really cool stuff. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, people, the, the, the easiest thing in the world and the hardest thing in the world is to write content. And yeah, it's so funny. I mean, I'm going on a tangent, which is part of why I do this, which is we have had a back and forth. You know, we, we do content. We have, uh, my buddy Alex says, we, you know, we do web content. There, All these people doing content. And it's one of those things that it is, it is tough because getting, there's nothing, but if you do it yourself, that's great. You're just not scalable. And one of the issues I've always seen is getting content. There are two reasons you're writing it, right? We've always said one is for SEO and the other is for the actual end user reading it. And I remember in college, this is what I use by analogy. I was talking to somebody about this. There was a guy who wrote in the middle of his blue book, third one, please check in the margin if you're still reading, knowing that a lot of people read the first paragraph and the last, but don't. And in fact, nobody actually checked the box. The guy just, you know, clearly hadn't read his paper. So, you know, to a certain extent, I feel like, there's a balancing act on content between you want to hit the terms, you want to be able to talk about what it is, you want high quality content, but that there's nobody on the planet that can produce what, you know, what is awesome content and what's academically awesome may not be what makes you money, particularly at scale. So, right. I, I mean, I was having this conversation yesterday when I was at lunch with a, an attorney friend of mine, actually a couple of attorney friends of mine. And we were talking, we were saying, how do we, and he's been pushing this new brand, my friend, Danny Karen, he's a class action lawyer, great guy, great plaintiff attorney. And he's been pushing this new brand and he's recording videos every day. And, you know, he's putting out the content and he said, Scott, how long did it take you for, to get traction with top class actions? I said, brother, you've got to continue to just keep push, seeding that content. And as long as you're seeing consistent growth, even if it's a little bit, consistently month after month, you're doing the right thing. Because the problem is you're competing with little bunny videos. Because that's what my wife and my kids spent a half an hour the night before watching was Instagram videos of cute little bunnies. I said, and my, my, my kids are watching Karen videos and you know, it's like you're, you're and, and I guess, look, that, that is part of the game. So you're, you're there, he's digging deep on that. You dug deep, you created it and built a, a, a substantial corpus. So what happened once you woke up one day and said, okay, this isn't a side hustle. We have our content. This is the, I've seen proof of concept. How did you take it to the next level? Well, and so the, the thing is when we're just working with class action attorneys, you come to me, you say, Scott, I want to file a class action against Apple because there's the defective uh, antenna. I run the campaign for you. I charge you a flat fee for that month. And then you're gone for three to six months until you want to file your next class action. So our revenue just did this. And so we are consistently increasing every year, but it, but it's not long term. But it, it wasn't long term. It's spiky. Yeah, exactly. And then so four years into it, I lose my job in cloud computing sales, and Where I was a prima donna sales guy at a yeah. new company. I had five managers in the year. I I'd, I had left my great company that helped create HBO Go to jumping ship to a new company, and that was a terrible decision from that job perspective. Um, but getting fired from that company gave me that focus because at that point I had three or four contractors 
who were writing for me and kind of touching on that point, it was a good thing that I wrote all that content be before I focused on sales because I wrote all the content. I wrote a thousand articles and then I, I was able to afford to bring on writers, contract writers and editors and make you know, pay them and then start focusing on sales. Um, and that was a big part of, you know, continuing that growth. But once I got fired, I, that's when I had the opportunity to pivot into mass torts because I was sitting outside in the patio with my wife and I had two job offers, one from a company in cloud computing here in Phoenix that was terrible. My friends had worked for hated. Another one was a great company out in Los Angeles, which would require us to move. Or option three was going full-time on top class actions. And so- Look, Knowing you now, and I don't know who you were then, but my guess is you were you were not somebody who should have been caged. Like this is your your calling was for something to have managers telling you what to do when you are arguably the the most innovative guy in the room doesn't really fly well. Well, and that's that's what happened is I, I was working on closing this big deal with a huge the number two video um, video behind YouTube, and. I had worked on that deal for six months and they said, Hey, big corporation, we shuffled your account. So that's no longer your account. And I went, well, I'm close. I'm signing the deal next month. They, you know, this is sales. This meets my quota for the entire year. Uh, I need to keep this account. And they went, well, you can partner up with your buddy here and he'll get half your commission. And I said, no, it's not going to work for me. I said, be a team player, Scott. And I'm like, I am a team player, six months, personal relationship with the CEO. And they went, well, by oh i forget you're a big company you don't care you know it's a, a big deal to me is not Ooh, a big curiosity deal. What, what happened to the deal oh they didn't get it they didn't get it. where'd it go uh it went to i think it went to actually to my old my old company interesting yeah and so they were they i reached out to the ceo right after i was fired and i said hey just you know i'm no longer there and she's like well but we've been talking for six months i said i know but best of luck i'll let you know where i land so one of the things as you've built this out, and I'll be a little ADHD in this conversation, you know, we, most of us watching know where this has landed as one of the top brands that's out there. You've done a great job organically. Uh, you have some amazing partners in, in the deal uh, at the, the highest levels of mass torts. You know, one of the things that we've talked about privately is sort of the pull, the pull and tug between you have a marketing business and law firm, something yes. you know about. Talk to me, especially, uh, you know, with what's going on in Arizona, Utah, uh, you've been very vocal about things going on in Arizona, your thoughts about ways to integrate marketing plays with the potential uh, opportunities that are out there now. Well, I've always said what I've had people approach me about acquiring top class actions. Uh, one group approached me in like year one and a half. I mean, I'm still working full time. And they came at me and said, we'll give you 700,000 for top class actions. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of freaking money. Well, and I said, what, what, you know, more compared to a sales job, which was hit or miss. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a sale, I mean, I was pulling in a couple hundred grand a year in sales. I understand, like, but that's like two, three years job. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was, it, I was doing well, but that's $700,000. And I said to him, I said, I don't know if top class actions is my only one idea. And if it's my only one idea, I need a million dollars just so I can say I got bought out for a million dollars and they wouldn't do it. They said, oh, there's too much risk, got too much risk. Well, that, that same company came back in 2020 and we, we, we stopped our discussions at 20 million and I said, it wasn't enough. Um, so that was it's such a great story. It was, it, it was fun. I mean, it was great when I said to them, as I said, hey, you know, you offered me a 700 grand like, and you, you turned down a million and they said, what? And they dug into it and they went, wow, we didn't, that's, cause that was, that would have been 13, 12 or 13 years ago. Well, to be so, fair, you, it's, it's not, it's apples and oranges, right? You had a URL yes. with some content. You now have a viable business with the well, that now, brand. Yeah. I mean, now we're the number one website in the world for class action lawsuits and settlements. You know, now we get 1.5 million viewers a month and touching back on your, 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 when you talked about content and people viewing your content. We used to publish 125 to 150 articles a week. And then we took a look at this in the past year and a half and did exactly what you said. And we we're like, all right, about half of this content isn't being read. It's being indexed. Well, that's, different. That's, different. that's a different issue. 
meaning it's not the quality of it, which right. again, I'm, I'm saying it's, you know, look, you want, you said this earlier, which is exactly right in my opinion, which is the steady strip of content shows Google, they keep coming back, the crawlers are there, that's great. But what you're doing is a metaphor for most of the single event players out there where you have this big clunky site People come to Blue Shark and we have 5,000 pages of content. And you look at it and there's two or 3,000, which seemed like a good idea at the time, but is now regurgitated news blogs about an accident on a corner from 2013. Similarly, you have dead stuff on there. Less is more in a lot of life. You know, whether right. it be a Saturday Night Live skits, took it down to the best hour, got rid of the, the, the crappy half hour, a Broadway show instead of two and a half hours, hour, 45 minutes. I'm a big fan. Same with this here, right? If you if you get rid of and prune the site, my guess is it performed that much better. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing is we've continued to grow. And now we're at that 1.5 million viewers a month, even though we cut our content in half. Correct. And nice. my guess is over time, you'll be looking and finding what areas are dead wood you know, again, I don't, I don't know how you handle this. What do you do with stuff once a class action is gone? Does the stuff stay indexed? Yes. Yeah. We'll which, just, it, which I'm again, gonna... is a decision you'll look at in the future, right? Some of it's cool historical, but if it's really, and if it's really not doing you any good, you know, there are times when, you know, again, let there, there are, the more you could show Google, this is a high performing site. And I, I've seen the negative side of this, um, we get on the local news shows a lot and the local Fox five good connections with been on their ton over the years. They keep taking their content and slashing it. When they relaunch a website, they take everything from the past is gone. The whole historical archives, except for anything that went viral, they'll leave that on. And it's just wow. fascinating to see. And again, they, they are all about page views impressions why have this big clunky thing? Now, again, there's value at some levels for having size, but, you know, again, a much longer, uh, you know, high level SEO conversation is when do you prune and when don't you? Right. And we haven't, we don't prune our content because on the class action side, people are searching for articles and lawsuits that might've been filed five years ago. And we'll follow that lawsuit from year one until it settles and pays out. And what, so, what do you do out of curiosity? What do you do after it pays out and there's no opportunity for somebody? Do you, somebody, you still want the person who took uh, a supplement to be able to find that there was something and see the arc and see that it's closed? Right, right. And so we're having larger discussions now since now we've been doing this for about 14 years and you I still have articles close. from year one. Right. And, and what, what, is still ranking what isn't and what should we go ahead and prune is a very good question. And I will add that to my leadership meeting, Mr. Price, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a discussion about it because it's, it's very interesting. And then, 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 then there's a lot of different ways to take to approach it, right? More is more versus less is more. Um, so talk to me as you have this platform, what are your thoughts generally, not even for you specifically, but I, I moderated a panel at, at NTL uh, in, in Miami, which had some luminary. Andrew Figelstein has been working on the, you know, the, this ABS stuff. You had Keith Givens, who rarely speaks, who is super passionate about this. Yes. A and, um, you know, you were looking at, um, Keith was very much get on, the, you figure out what's going on in Arizona, learn about it, deal with it. Um, you know, Fickelstein, which who's in New York, where he doesn't see this coming anytime soon, is like, look, there's always going to be a place. There's going to be a Papa John's and a Domino's, you know, and there's going to be with, you know, massive corporate money. And there's going to be your corner Italian place that makes great pizza that you love going to that makes a good living. And uh, what, what, what's your perspective on, on all that's going on? Because you spent a fair bit of time thinking about this. So, yeah, I mean, I'd always said if I want to maximize the value of top class actions, a law firm has to buy it. And then that long-term, this is like really secret sauce here, is that long-term plan is take top class actions, the cases that are, you know, the investigations that are going through here, well, they go through the law firm, right? And that law firm is going to be able to maximize the value for the organic plaintiff finding that that top class actions does. And when I looked at what 
top class actions charged for some of the mass tort campaigns. And I'll use Roundup as an example. Um, the, the word that I had from most of my friends, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about this here, but is that Roundup, the average plaintiff attorney who was sending up Roundup claims, signing up people, if they were referring those cases out, they got about 30,000, average about $30,000 in fees to themselves. That was, you know, if, if you were advertising and you get about 30 grand per case. Well, we're running on top class actions roundup. And we were charging about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 a month for that campaign. But all of our campaigns at top class actions are a flat rate. We don't charge per lead. We don't sign up cases. Everything's a flat rate. And I know that we were signing, that our clients were signing three to 10 roundup cases per month. And so I know that that ended up generating ninety to $300,000 a month in revenue for those guys. And of course, they had to put out the money up front and they had to wait three, four years to get paid. But that's a significant change. It gives you the ability to diversify. Yes. Right? You know, meaning, it, it, look, I, it's, there's no easy lunch, right? I have a law firm. Um, could I, instead of doing Blue Shark, build a PI site in every major market? and generate cases of variety. There's part of its risk, part of its diversification, but the ability to pump money in addition, because right now I assume you're mostly organic, all of a sudden yep. you got a platform where you could be doing all sorts of cool stuff, but that the equity needed to do that, you know, it'd be better if it didn't come out of Scott's dessert kitty, but rather, yes. you know, other, other people's money. And I assume that that's, that's the thinking. Yeah, and that's and so now we're, we're able to take with our Arizona law firm, and it took us a year and a half to go through the process. Now we were the fastest Arizona law firm approved. We got our application submitted in December, um, and we got approved in January. It was slightly over thirty days, um, but even though we were the fastest one approved, it still took a year and a half of planning and speed bumps and problems along the way to get there. To get our Arizona law well, firm. Any, and what were, what were some of those? If somebody was doing, what would your advice to somebody be if they were jumping into that? One, make sure that your compliance attorney, because for any Arizona ABS, alternative business structure that's created, you have to have a compliance attorney. Make sure that that compliance attorney is crystal clean, is A plus rated, and has experience in the field that you're in. And so if you want to go into class actions, Make sure that that person has been a class action lawyer for 10 years. If they're in mass torts, make sure they got a lot of experience in mass torts. Oh, I see. So this is, this is not your ethics attorney. This is the compliance attorney that's required to the, Correct. The checks and balances. Correct. Yeah. And everything went through our ethics attorney. And, but our compliance attorney, um, she, she's, she's fantastic. She's got years of experience on the plaintiff side with class action. She's actually been plaintiff and defense. And, uh, she is a stellar, a stellar this person. Is the woman that we, we, we dine with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cami Bass. And she's a, she's a stellar attorney. Um, and of course you've got to make sure that your, your authorized persons are all crystal clean and clear. And you've got to make sure that, you know, whoever's running it is, is on the right track because if there are any speed bumps along the way, you don't want to have the, Arizona, the, the, the board that approves you to be asking a ton of questions because the more questions they ask, the more likely that they're going to say no. Um, and that's, that's one of the things is that if, if you are cleared, if you, if you, and you've got a very, and your application is very clear on what you're going to do, then you're going to be in great shape. Our application, our focus is being great litigators that work with the best litigators in the country. And we are actively going to be working as the lawyer's lawyer. And so when we are doing all of our advertising, we are going to be talking about if you are looking for the lawyer's lawyer, the person that Seth Price calls when he needs a lawyer, you go to Legify, which is our law firm, Legify.com, and you Legify it. If you go to L-E-G-A-F-I, Legify, you will get typically one to three lawyers. And this is long-term. We're still building our network right now. 
But these are lawyers that you or I would call if we need help. It's not going to be the person necessarily that's advertising on TV. It's not the person that's in the stadium. It's not the person on the buses or the bus stops. This is a person that we know is a, is a badass litigator. And all they per, do- Per jurisdiction or for, per mass tort? Per, per jurisdiction and mass tort. And so on the mass tort side, we're going to also be you know, taking the cases that we generate on top class actions and then sending them right to the folks on the steering committee. And making sure that who, whoever we send those cases to are the ones that are actively settling these cases for the highest amount for our clients, because you know we want to make sure our clients get paid. Um, and that's been an interesting, interesting process. But uh, as you said, part of it's being able to scale. And there's so much money coming into our space right now. You know, there are groups that are raising hundreds of millions of dollars right now to come into the mass tort space and come into the PI space. And if you take a look at how costs have increased, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm blowing smoke here, Seth, hold me accountable. But in 2020, for the mass tort specifically, I, from our research and what I've been told, the advertisement expenses for pay-per-click doubled. And then in 2021, the advertising expenses for pay-per-click also doubled. And I think that when we have all this money coming in, hundreds of millions of dollars this year, it's going to go continue to go up. And I, so you need to have that plan as to who you're going to work with, because you can be the big dog in your city and you can try to scrape off some mass tort advertisements from the people that are calling in. But there are huge groups that are making a nationwide presence right now. And you need to be ready for it. I mean, or if you're a badass litigator and you're not, you're not doing any advertising anyways right now because you get all your cases referred to you, hopefully you'll call me and we'll, we'll vet you. We'll take a look at the cases that you filed. We'll take a look at you, know, you as a lawyer and we, you know, we may add you to our network so we can send you, send our clients that we're creating at legify.com or on top class actions because people trust us. That's the, that's, we're building on that brand of trust. And I get people all the time, just like you do, that say, hey, I need a lawyer for this. Who should I call? And I don't want to call the guy in the bus stop. And so we'll take that time and send them to those. Oh, like I, I get it. It's been my business model. Like, you know, yeah, you, you, you gain your own, you know, I don't have a the official network, maybe I should, but we, you know, you know, people call me all the time saying, Hey, where do I go in Kansas city? Where do I go in San Diego? It's um, very good. Any final thoughts for, for our audience? Uh, you know, what, what's, uh, what are you excited about? What, what's next? Well, I've been talking a lot about things internationally. That's going to be fun. Um, as we continue to look at our international growth. Because top class actions is now in the US, Canada, the UK, Ireland in the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to be doing some more international expansion. No, no Australia? No, Australia, I, I was tempted. But Australia, if you want to get nerdy for another minute on the class action side, it was really, I was, I was dying to go to Australia five years ago. Because in Australia, class actions are filed by corporations rather than individuals. So you create your little corporation, you file your class action, lose your pays. So you gotta be ready in case everything goes south to pay. But it looked pretty good. But then legislatively, things have gotten a lot harder on plaintiff attorneys in Australia over the last couple of years. So it hasn't been inviting. And of course it's small population wise. I got you. No, I, I, I studied there in the semester abroad. I worked there as a summer associate, uh, hoping to even get back there this summer. And I've been, we have Blue Shark actually has an Australian client. I would love, love, love to build out the base, you know, there just as an excuse to be able to, hey, you know, be, get there once in a while. Um, well, let's, let's do it, Seth. Let's, let's build a, uh, Top class actions and Blue Shark and Legify, Price Benowitz, all down there in Australia. We can we can figure something or, out, or at least get ourselves enough to uh, write off the trip. Oh, that, that's that's easy. No, I'd, I'd be, I'd I got to be I would I would love to, but no. But I also am a big believer. You go where the 
where it makes sense. If the, if you're, if you're like, I, I, I know you well enough to know, you know, if, if, if there are nine desserts on the menu, you're only ordering eight, there's a reason that ninth wasn't ordered. Um, <laughs> you know, if you, if you, if you, you have plenty of dessert on the table, uh, I, my feeling is you should enjoy the key lime and the uh, strawberry shortcake and, and, and leave that sort of off-brand carrot cake to the, to the side. Well, and that's it. That's why I'm still going to continue to, even though we're doing some more single event stuff, and we're going to be continuing to grow the single event side, specifically with Legify, we're going to be largely focused on mass actions, class actions, mass arbitrations. And let, let these guys who are putting in $500 million, let those guys work on the mass tort side and start nibbling away when they create their nationwide PI law firms and let them start nibbling away at that. We, I'm never going to have $500 million well, maybe one day, but right now I don't have $500 million to put in. And I don't want to necessarily swim in that pool. I would rather be able to grow things. Like you said, if I take a $500 million investment, I'm reporting to those guys. They're my boss. And I'd rather be nimble and be able to do what we do and grow things organically on a global scale. And that's part of why the Legify, Legify is branded as it is, short for legal fidelis. But Legify, you can say in any country, in any language, and they can still go Legify it. But I don't have the stigma of class actions like I do with the top class actions brand. And so internationally, yeah, you'll I get see it. it gives you another it gives you another brand. It? Yeah. Well, Scott, I, I very much appreciate this. We will get to see and hang out at uh, MTMP, I am sure. This Absolutely. April in Vegas, looking very forward to it. And uh, thank you as always. Uh, what an awesome conversation. I'll see you at the dessert table, my friend. Thank you for tuning in to the SEO Insider with Seth Price. Be sure to check back next week for fresh insights into building your brand's online presence. Episodes are available to stream directly on Blue Shark Digital's website.